How's it going everyone? Dr. Ben here, your internet doctor dad that cares about you and today is it me or is it nighttime? Yeah, it's uh it's 10:36 right now and you might be wondering, "Ben, you're making a vlog at night? Aren't you going to go to bed?" And that is no. And the reason why is because um Monday, today is Saturday. Monday is going to be my first shift in residency. I'm going to be uh, doing night float, two weeks of night float, which is a 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. shift. So this weekend, I'm going to use my time. Thank God for my residency program that cares about wellness. Even though I am doing night shifts, they give me the weekends off. So what I'm going to be doing this weekend is to stay up for as long as possible so that when I do actually start my first shift, I'm not going to be dead on the inside um, trying to stay up. I will be well rested and my circadian rhythm which is my sleep cycle, the fancy word for it, is adequate for me to do night shifts with sanity. So even though it is around 10 p.m., which is Jean-Luc's most active time of the day, I am just getting my day midway started. I woke up today at around maybe uh, 1, 1 p.m. So the goal is to try and... Um, wake up around 3 p.m. for the next two weeks. So we're gonna start off tonight with some meal prep. I already have some mushrooms that have been uh, washed and they're just drying right now. And earlier this morning for the last couple of hours, two giant bowls of marinated chicken has been marinating in my fridge. One of them is uh, jerk chicken and the other is this uh, lime chicken that my friend Nomi made for my birthday which was absolutely delicious. So we're going to cook those up um, and see how they are. Go ahead and try a little piece. Ooh, it's hot. Mmm. Very limey. There's a ton of lime juice, some oregano, garlic powder. Very, very simple recipe, but oh so delicious. All right, y'all, so we just finished the first batch of food, and then the next marinade is jerk chicken. This is different from the usual Grace brand that I get, which is authentic from Jamaica. Unfortunately, the Kroger that I went to, not Kroger, Harris, Harris Teeter, even though it's owned by the same company, did not have the Grace authentic brand that I usually like, the wet rub, uh, that's like super, super concentrated. But um, they had some private selection brands, so we're gonna try it out. I. We'll probably have to add more spices to it, but we'll see. It smells like jerk chicken, but not as strong. So yeah, this might be a jerk chicken light. So I just made the first round of jerk chicken and let's try it. Ooh, it's hot. I'll be really honest, this don't taste like jerk chicken. It's more like pollo tropical pineapple chicken. It's good, but it's nothing like jerk chicken. So I'm definitely gonna have to get my classic Grace brand that is authentic. This I could actually use as like a citrus grilled chicken marinade, but I would never feed it to someone and say it's jerk chicken. That would put shame on me. But yeah, um, it's not terrible. And I boosted it with other spices. So yeah, this is a really great meal prep option as well. And that is it, y'all. This is the second dish, the tropical chicken. I refuse to call this jerk chicken. Um, 
but it does taste a lot like pollo tropical and I can definitely tell that there's a lot of sugar in it because whenever when I was um, <coughs> when I was cooking it down um, the chicken caramelized and made it so 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 freaking tasty I'm gonna use this as my pollo tropical recipe and not my jerk chicken recipe um, and it's gonna carry out great it is officially 1 a.m. too and I am oh so freaking exhausted y'all I'm ready to go to bed I, I guess I'm old but I don't know how I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to survive till 7 a.m. this morning but um, I'm just so freaking tired I'm ready like to go to bed even though I like woke up at like 11 30 this morning <sighs> It's going to be a hard two weeks, especially when I'm on the job awake like this. I know in this vlog, y'all are probably thinking like, hey, Ben, I know you haven't started your first shift in residency, but you've definitely started orientation for at least a week. And yes, yes, I definitely have. And orientation, I kid you not, y'all, has been going absolutely great. It's given me an opportunity to meet my co-residents get to know them better, get to know my faculty. And I honestly did not expect this transition to go as smoothly as it has gone so far. Uh, one, orientation made me realize I freaking love my co-residents. My co-residents are amazing. They're the greatest people that I can see myself growing with in the next four years as I become a psychiatrist. And they are just so wholesome and they bring so many new perspectives and i could not ask for a greater cohort this is better than med school i'm already starting off on a better foot than i did in medical school as far as the faculty that i'm going to be working with i've gotten to know them a little bit better as far as like the core faculty and i like them but i i still feel like i don't know them enough and i also have this i have my walls up for sure when it comes to authority especially in medicine uh, given my history of how I've been treated in medical school, but also how I've been treated as a patient and how professors generally tend to treat me uh, for who I am. So I do have my walls up still when it comes to my professors, but at the same time, I feel a lot better with them than I have in the past, especially in med school. So we are starting off to a great start. My mental health has been amazing the last week. Uh, I think I'm finally over that dipping period after all the things that happened um, and I'm looking forward to the future and I'm looking forward to being a good doctor and being good to my patients like I am in such a positive positive mood and I hope I never in, like ever put myself in a position where I get that low but I know it can happen in the future but I definitely am so proud of myself for getting through that and now I'm I'm ready to take on residency and I'm ready to take on being a doctor for a bunch of patients who rely on me. I also want to make a couple of very small announcements in this vlog um, and it has to do with uh, how I tend to monetize my things uh, on this channel and one is that I'm going to stop putting Amazon affiliate links on all my vlogs and all my videos just because, <clears throat> sorry, I'm coughing because there was so much smoke that was generated while I was cooking. Um, but I'm stopping all Amazon affiliate stuff because of the fact that I am earning an income now and I don't really need it. Well, I could always earn, make more money, but I want to be authentic and I want to be genuine and I want to make sure that I am not being influenced by money uh, to make certain types of content. So I want to make content that is not influenced by anything or has a set goal for me other than sharing my life with y'all and encouraging y'all to do your best and uh, teaching y'all about medicine and about psychiatry and mental health. Other than that, I don't want anything influencing my content as far as YouTube videos go uh, because YouTube tends to have the most depth as far as the content in my videos. TikTok, I don't really have that, but Instagram Reels and stuff, those are, those are things I can have sponsors because I don't take that as seriously as I do this content. Y'all, I can definitely tell that even when it comes to like making these talking pieces to y'all, I'm like so, so low energy right now. So low energy. It's going to be a rough night, <sighs> but we're going to do it together. We're going to do it together.
<laughs> I also want to give y'all a big update on something bad that John Luke has done. I finished his accent wall. Look how beautiful it is. So, so, so proud. You'd think that he would be grateful for, for his dad making an accent wall like this, but something I didn't realize after I made this accent wall is that uh, he can reach the ceiling on this shelf. And I did not realize that my Google Fiber cord actually runs up this ceiling. It runs up the ceiling and goes this way. And because of how cheap companies are, they use the skintiest fiber optic wires uh, to channel it through. So it looks like it's seam seamless through the ceiling and into where it needs to go. But the thing is, because it's so flimsy that Jean-Luc was able to break it. So I was without internet for a day and I had no idea why. Um, and then I found the loose wire, tracked it down and found out uh, that uh, he had broken the Google Fiber Optic wire and there is no way to fix it unless uh, you buy a completely new wire. But I managed to trace down this wiring and I knew it ended up here. And when you trace it down, it actually ends up in this box. And in that box is actually the fiber optic cord. So what I ended up doing is I ended up having to move my entire modem here so I can connect it to the main cable that goes into uh, this thing to the outside where Google Fiber comes from. So I just basically had to uh, short line the connection because he had broken this one. So I bought a new cable and hopefully this new cable, I'm going to be able to reroute it <laughs> back to uh, where it's supposed to be in the living room. But uh, yeah, I, I was freaking out for a while. I thought I was gonna get in a lot of trouble with my apartment complex and they were gonna charge me for uh, having to fix it because they needed an engineer in to rewire all of this. But what I'm going to do is not going, I'm not going to tell anybody, <laughs> not going to tell Google, not going to tell my apartment company. And just because Google also charges you for sending their texts in. Um, so I'm just gonna, I bought the wire, so I'm just gonna reroute it myself because I have at least some knowledge on how to uh, anchor in wires and they won't even notice a thing. Hey y'all, I figured I should give an update. I don't know when was the last time I did the update. <laughs> I am lucid right now. Um, it's like 2 a.m. and I don't know why I'm so tired. Like when I was 16 or whenever I have like a crush or something, I can stay up till 5 a.m. tweeting, texting, shenaniganing away. And I'm like leg legit about to pass out, but I'm, I'm keeping myself up. I'm having dinner right now, uh, but I can barely keep food down because I just don't have an appetite this late. And like, I'm like literally passing out, but we got five more hours left, so I gotta find something to do, but I don't want to do anything. I don't even have the energy to watch TV, but we're gonna keep, we're gonna keep doing this. Hey y'all, <laughs> I know I look ridiculous right now, but I made it to 3 a.m which was my milestone last night. So the goal is to at least stay up till five. So two more hours. And if I can make it till seven, then that's the ideal. But I'm already so exhausted. So hopefully, hopefully um, we make it to at least five and I'll call that a win. And then tomorrow we can try till seven. I know I look dead inside right now. <laughs> I literally have no energy whatsoever. Jean-Luc is over there and I think he's upset because he can't be a bad boy right now because I'm awake. Cause usually at nighttime is when he starts doing things he shouldn't be doing and I start hearing banging and things. So 
Um, <laughs> he's just like trying to be calm, but he's not. I can see his tail wagging, which means he has energy. Hey, y'all. Okay, so it's 5 a.m. right now, and I know I look animated, and for some reason, around the 4.30 a.m. mark, I got like a whole rush of energy. Maybe it's the delirium. Maybe it's <laughs> me going uh, off my rocker, but I have energy. So even though I spent, I was a little bit disappointed in myself that I spent so much of the night just sitting on the couch not even watching TV, I ended up cleaning up a lot. So I cleaned up Jean-Luc's litter box, uh, refilled his litter genie, and also cleaned up the entire kitchen. I know I made a mess earlier in the night uh, when I cooked all that food, but uh, the kitchen is completely clean except for uh, the dishes um, in the sink. Also, I thought Jean-Luc would be a lot happier that I'm awake throughout the night, but I think he's actually upset because I've been brushing his teeth and he hasn't been able to um, he hasn't been able to destroy things throughout the night like he usually does because I'm keeping a watchful eye on him. Look at him nuzzling the camera. He's saying hi. He's saying hi. Oh my God, y'all! It's five forty-one. I don't look completely dead inside yet, but the big update right now is that we can see the sun coming up. That is wild. That's how long I stayed up today? No way. <laughs> Jean-Luc is also super excited because we can hear the birds chirping and them moving around. He can probably see better than I can. But y'all, I just gotta be up for like 20, 20 more minutes till I hit six. And then I'm just going to get ready for bed because it's probably going to take me 30 or 45 minutes to fall asleep. And today's goal was to just stay up till 5 to 7. So I'm going to call it that, call it at, in a couple of minutes. And then I can't even find the word that I'm trying to say. And then t tonight, <laughs> tonight attempt to stay up till 8 o'clock. Um, which should be ideal for night float for the next two weeks. Hey? What's, uh, what's all this? The decor? It's like a little eye <laughs> Good morning, y'all. Or should I say good afternoon? It is actually 3 p.m. right now. I woke up about an hour ago. So uh, I ideally got like about five and a half to six hours of sleep, depending on how long it took me to fall asleep last night. But um, I'm feeling a little bit tired and a little bit like not well rested, but I'm not feeling terrible. So this is definitely doable. And I think because it's the first day, my body is still adjusting to this new regimen. Um, so I think tonight's gonna be a lot easier. And um, once I start my actual shift tomorrow, I'm going to be ready and set to go uh, to handle this kind of schedule. So if y'all actually look at my window, there's a pretty big gap of light down here and I don't have any curtains to cover this kind of light. I leave the gap so John Luke can look out the window. That's one of his favorite part pastime hobbies, so I don't want to bother him. So you might be thinking, Ben, how do you sleep during the day, especially in the morning when there's sunlight? Um, and how do you like sleep through that? And my answer uh, is this thing. And this thing was actually recommended to me last night by an EM physician that I know, EM Conquers, they're amazing. Uh, they use it because emergency f medicine physicians tend to work uh, pretty, pretty wild shifts. Um, uh, yeah, they tend to work pretty wild shifts more than I will ever do. Um, but, uh, funny thing is I've actually owned the thing that they recommended me, uh, for the last <coughs> two, two-ish years. And it is a, uh, what's this thing called? An eye mask? Yeah, it's this nighttime bedtime mask. Uh, and you might be thinking, duh, Ben, obviously you would use one, but this one's different. This one's actually a premium one. So the ones that are cheap from the dollar store tend to be very flat, they tend to not be ergonomic, they tend to be kind of silky and make this kind of noise. 
and they overheat. So I actually hate them. But but this one is a bit more expensive. It's about 10 to $15 on Amazon. But it's made out of complete memory foam. I've used it a lot, so it's getting a little tattered. But it's made out of complete memory foam. Uh, it's soft and it has this these inserts, these insular inserts around here, especially around the nose area, to keep all sunlight out. And it does a tremendous job at keeping all sunlight out. I absolutely love it because it feels like I am in pitch black darkness, even in during the day. If I put this on, I can't see anything. And it does it so effectively. Another great thing about this is that it has this adjustable neck back strap for the back of your head. So you can actually adjust it to fit your face better. And I tend to do it pretty tight so it has a snug fit. And because it's made out of memory foam and there's all these gaps for my eye holes, it never gets too hot. It always stays cool. It always stays aerated. It never feels like something is attached to my face and trying to crush my face. So if you're someone who uh, is very sensitive to sunlight like me, or if you're doing night shifts, I highly recommend an ergonomic eye mask made out of memory foam uh, with an adjustable strap. Um, you can get it literally from any store. You're going to be paying a little bit more than the, those cheap dollar store ones, but it's definitely worth the bang for your buck. Also pretty amazing on flights. So yeah, I endorse this. Hey y'all, so uh, guess who just gave himself a, a new haircut? I. Uh, have a lot of energy surprisingly tonight it's been a couple of hours since I woke up this morning it's the day before my shift starts and um, right now it is 11 20 p.m. and I have a lot of energy and I've done a lot today so the first couple of hours since I made that update with you all was I was really groggy I did not want to do anything I was feeling super super tired and sometime around 8 o'clock I got like a whole bunch of energy so I ended up taking my car to the car wash, then I waxed it, then I gave myself a haircut, and then I showered. Oh my god, I've done a lot today and I've been cleaning up. And yeah, I feel like I can make it till 8 a.m. today, but we'll see. Um, I'll keep y'all updated. But I've been super, super productive and it's making me a bit more hopeful when it comes to uh, getting through the nights when I start my first shift tomorrow. So, since y'all really enjoy it whenever I review a new snack product or food uh, that I have on this channel, I got these protein bars from Costco. This is the Kirkland cookies and cream flavor. And I wanted to get a snack that was high in protein that I can take to the work, to the job that doesn't taste terrible and every single time I've ever tried a protein bar it's been the worst mistake I've ever made in my life and I stand by it so I got the Kirkland cookies and cream and I also got the peanut butter one I did not like the peanut butter at all actually it made me want it made me have so many regrets because these are expensive but these are the only like savory non liquidy thing that you can eat that's high in protein so I haven't tried the cookies and cream flavor yet and i'm assuming that y'all want to see my reaction to this um so yeah we're gonna we're gonna try this flavor right now i don't have that many hopes for it since the peanut butter one was a bit of a miss Alrighty, let's open this bad boy up I, this is 20 grams of 22 grams of protein that's huge and 10 grams of fiber with only 11 grams of carbs that like nutritionally this is so nutritionally dense and so good for you I just can't ever bring myself to enjoy these. I've tried Quest bars, I've tried Pure Protein, I've literally tried every protein bar out there and I've not liked a single one. If y'all have one that you swear by, let me know. Um, but it's really hard for me to get into these protein bars. All right, it's open. Yo, this kind of looks like cookie dough. The one like the Toll House cookie dough thingies. As you can find out the store it doesn't look like cookies and cream. It's kind of yellow <laughs> to be cookies and cream. Um. <laughs> I couldn't even hide my reaction. <laughs> it smells like a protein bar and artificial chocolate. 
Mm-hmm. I'm definitely gonna enjoy this decision that I made. I spent 20 bucks on those protein bars. So that means I have to eat all of them. Here we go. It's tolerable. <laughs> it definitely tastes like a chalky protein bar. I'm not getting any cookies and cream. I'm getting very chalky and very stale Toll House cookie dough. Very, very stale. You know the kind that you like leave in the back of the fridge and forget about it for about six months and then it gets all like hard and off tasting. Yep, this is it. And somehow, this one, I think is more tolerable than the nasty peanut butter chocolate. See, ideally, I would have like high protein burritos, some nice snack foods, but right now I'm broke. This is just not it. I don't think I can finish this, y'all. <coughs> yeah, my body's trying to kill itself. I'm trying to finish this. Ugh. Hey, y'all. So this is going to be the last update until I wake up from my shift. But I had energy all up until, like, maybe 4 a.m. And now I'm... And now it's 5. And I am dying so i think i'm just gonna lay on this couch watch some tv and chill until it's time for bed because uh, i can barely i can barely function right now this is gonna be a hard two weeks like no matter how much sleep i get during the day our bodies are just not made to be up throughout the night like i feel so bad like so so bad i don't know how i'm gonna do this like on the job but we'll see. Love y'all. Good morning, y'all. It's like 2 or maybe like 3 p.m.? Maybe it's 2. Let's check. It's 2.39. So I woke up really early today. Uh, not So I woke up really t early today. I'm having breakfast right now at 2.39. But I woke up at around 11 because my body just wouldn't let me sleep. And then I had to force myself back to sleep. So I think I've only gotten maybe like five and a half to six hours of sleep. It's, I've realized that despite, you know, training myself to stay up all night, our natural human response is to wake up during daylight and somehow our body figures it out. So like I am waking up earlier than planned and it's definitely, I know it makes me a little bit groggy around the 4 a.m. mark. But I think I can keep up with this for two weeks uh, that I'm on night folds. But I definitely realized that I would not want to do this for as like a full-time career. And I know people do this full-time. Oh, yeah. But I'm going to finish breakfast, uh, do some stuff, uh, get ready for my shift. And that'll be it. And I'll give you all a little bit of a report of how my first shift goes because I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a little a little cray cray hey y'all so I am ready and set to go it's, a, it's like 5 20 right now I have to go in an hour early today for orientation into my uh, new role on night float um, so I'm 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 all dressed up I look dashing in my scrubs got my lunch lunch or dinner <laughs> ready and um yeah i just gotta head out the door i'll let y'all know how my first shift goes i'm a little nervous um but also not feeling anxious so hopefully i feel the way throughout the night and i feel confident i'm just trying to trick myself into thinking i can do this because i can and i have to for my patients anyways see y'all on the other side hey y'all what is up it's been a minute since the last update clip from this vlog but officially i'm i'm at home right now it's about 1 p.m and that is because i am no longer on night float it's actually been three uh, three weeks three official weeks 
since I started residency and oh my gosh, let me give y'all a brief review of my first rotation, which was night float. And some of the things that I learned as uh, a new doctor and a lot of really good like surprises. I was totally scared for this um, rotation. Y'all already know why, because it's one of the hardest ones. You literally stay up all night and you know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then you take care of emergency emergency psych situations. So I was very scared and uh, I'm here to report that I have been having such a great time while I was on that rotation and it gave me the backbone to become uh, a well, well, like inquisitive doctor, a well-minded doctor, a doctor that's prepared for all future rotations going on forth uh, as I go through residency. Dang, this bedroom is a little dark, so I'm gonna turn on my skylight as per usual. Oh, that is so much better. So, um, yeah, let me tell y'all about how it's been. Um, it's been really, really good. I love being a doctor. I love my job, which is wild because I think I worked like 60 hours the last two weeks. And all I did when I was on a night float was work, come home, and sleep. So I'll say this, this is a flash review because I know this vlog is already pretty long and I want to end it, sh end it in a reasonable time. But the first thing I learned when I got to my first shift on Night Float is the fact that everybody is willing to help you, especially your senior. They've been in the position that I've been in. My first senior, she was such a wonderful person. She literally told me on my first day, hey, like, I know like you're gonna, you're like on, on the, on the handout, you have a lot of responsibility, but what we're going to do is we're going to ease you into it. So I want you to just see new, new consults and <clears throat> I can handle everything else. And having a good senior when in medicine, which is a very much like kind of like becoming a sushi master or a chef master where you kind of learn on the job more than you actually do reading books, which is kind of antithetical because we spent so much time in medical school reading books, but a lot of it is actually learning how to apply that knowledge to patients. Um, and she kind of was my amazing grandmaster where she taught the young Padawan and how to take on these skills. So I started off like just getting my feet wet and I got super, super confident because she believed in me. She gave me roles that I could do. And I was, I always came in every day excited. Um, to learn something new. And I think that's the mindset I put myself in because I, I I remember in medical school, I although I really loved medicine, I really loved science, um, everything felt like such a chore and I, it had a lot to do with the environment. I wasn't really stimulated and I wasn't really supported in a lot of ways. But my seniors, this first rotation, actually my seniors overall have been so, so amazing. Um, <clears throat> and I remember my first day so, so scared to prescribe melatonin and I got so confident by the end of the ro night flow rotation. I got comfortable prescribing controlled substances uh, when it was clinically indicated for patients under the, under the supervision of my attending and my seniors. So I, I have to say I'm pleasantly surprised. I went into this rotation uh, like dreading the worst. I was dreading, you know, having to learn all of this on my own. I was dreading to, you know, <clears throat> dreading to practice medicine. Maybe people will think I'm a nincompoop, but I was pleasantly very well educated and things that I didn't know, I asked questions, but I surprised myself with how much initiative I took. And I, I'm uh, my goal is to continue this, um, this kind of philosophy that I've taken on and uh, continue to practice good patient care and keep up with my knowledge in medicine. Ah, uh, oh my God. I'm just so happy. And um, as far as like getting adjusted to the night schedule, staying up in, in the weekends actually did help quite a lot, like a lot, because my first day I wasn't tired as hecky. Also, I heeded one of my seniors advice that I talked to uh, prior to starting the rotation and she ended up telling me, hey, 
I know, I know you're gonna want to do things, you're gonna want to do chores, you're gonna want to like, you know, go out and do things. You don't have to do that when you're on nights because humans aren't made to live through the night. So even though I felt like I was getting so much sleep during night float, I was sleeping eight hours a day. All I did was work, come home, sleep, and I slept right before I had to go back to work. I did no chores, like my place ended up becoming a mess, but I followed her advice I also got one, use this thing. I've told you all about this before. I've had this for a while. And it was also a recommendation by EJ Conkers, who's a great non-binary uh, uh, emergency med physician. Y'all should follow them. Um, but these things made it so easy to sleep throughout the day. Melatonin helped so much. Uh, I mean, like I felt like I was very, very prepared to handle how difficult it's going to be to like live in that kind of cycle. But at the end of the day, even though I managed it well, it was still so, so freaking hard. And it was so hard to live a life that humans aren't meant to live. But it was also very, very rewarding knowing that I could handle it. And uh, would I do that for the rest of my life? Absolutely not. But I truly enjoyed the service. I truly enjoyed being there for people who are probably in one of the most vulnerable psychiatric parts of their life. And um, patients responded well to me and I plan on continuing to do this amazing work. Anyways, y'all, I just got back about maybe an hour ago from um, my neuro consult rotation. And that's been going very well, but that that's a topic for another day. I hope y'all enjoyed this vlog. I know there's a lot of content here, but it, there was just so much to do prior to the start of residency. I'm finally getting to a point where I feel comfortable in my home. I feel comfortable living in Durham. Although there's been one setback and I'll talk about it in a future blog, blog but it has to do a lot with medical ethics and surveillance and you know, looking at people's social media accounts when it's not appropriate. Uh, especially if you're an employer. But uh, other than that, uh, things have been going really, really well. And I'm so excited to see the kind of doctor I'm going to be over the next couple of years. And even in the next couple of months. Um, anyways, I love y'all. Please follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my daily life and activism work in addition to my YouTube channel. And I'll see y'all in the next vlog. Mwah. This is Dr. Ben.